He has worked with pretty much everybody you'd kind of want to work with in terms of a CV. Another impressive CV that, you know, is humbling to look at. He has worked uh, under Marcus Waring at the Barclay. He's worked under Gordon Ramsay at Royal Hospital Road. He's worked under Brett Graham at the Ledbury down there. He's worked under Rick Stein in Cornwall, uh, Thomas Keller at Perse in New York, and, of course, under René Rezepe at Noma as well. So he, he's got a pretty in impressive CV. And actually, despite being obviously very focused on his, his work at Per Se with Thomas Keller, he also found a little bit of time to do a bit of light flirting with Sandia Chang behind me, who eventually became his wife. Uh, now, obviously, business partners. They set up uh, in, in 2012 uh, Bubble Dogs, which if you've been there, you'll know how exciting that is. And at the back of Bubble Dogs, they've got the kitchen table at Bubble Dogs, uh, which is a very different concept. And I guess um, these two, I guess, represent almost the changing face of modern gastronomy in themselves. So please give a huge round of applause uh, for James Nappett and Sandia Chang, <laughs> accompanied by Mark over there. Cheer <laughs> uh, Now. James has, has set himself a major mission to do eight different dishes within 35 minutes. So the man is under pressure, so he's going to get going. And along the way, I'll ask him a few questions about your philosophy, which I think, I, actually, I think I'm right in saying you kind of do embody this changing face of gastronomy. So off you go, James. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to uh, show you very quickly um, sort of uh, small courses in and between the, uh, the tasting menu we do in the kitchen table. And then we're going to finish with... Um, what, what most people come for now is the hot dogs. So it's um, two, two, two concepts. Uh, in the front is bubble dogs, and this is um, a design or a concept that me and Sandia uh, chose to do, and this comes through Sandia's passion for champagne. So uh, she really <laughs> wanted to highlight... It's a good passion. Um, yeah, yeah, she really wanted to highlight uh, grower champagne, and uh, that was her passion. And then um, we didn't want to open just a, a champagne bar because, um, obviously, around just a champagne bar, certain thoughts come to uh, what that involves. So we really wanted to uh, downplay um, champagne and make it as uh, sort of accessible and as normal as any other drink on the high street, so like a pint or something like this. But also with that uh, prime, uh, price aspect of, like, you know, you don't always have to pay... 16 pounds for a glass of champagne somewhere. Uh, like a pint's now, well, I think pint's more expensive than champagne now. Yeah. But um, we wanted to do that. So to go with it, so uh, to keep it uh, low key, we just wanted to do something fun with it as a food. So this is where uh, she came up with the idea of uh, hot dogs. And, uh, you know, we just, once it was a crazy idea, uh, she popped the name out one day like Bubble Dogs. And, um, you know, from. <laughs> From then on, uh, you know, we haven't looked back it's on it, and it's been... Um, You're drinking a lot of champagne. Yeah. We're inspired by yeah. the we, champagne And we haven't looked back on that, and it's just been, uh, you know, super, super great for us. But, um, but there, was, there was another facet to that, wasn't it? Because, Sandy, you, you, like, you like the champagne idea, but then, of course, James had his desire to use all that he'd learned along the way as well. Yeah, that's right. We were arguing about who gets whose idea to open a restaurant. We spent nights arguing and arguing. Yeah. Finally, we said, you know what? We're just going to split the restaurant in half. You get to run one side of it, and I get to do my concept on the other. Yeah. And that's how it became a perfect so. uh, ex uh, recipe for marital bliss. It was bliss. compromise. It yeah. was a compromise. A, a big dividing wall <laughs> between yeah. the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> if it was only that easy to divide. <laughs> so I kept listening to the idea, and um, uh, like you know, when we was deciding that we needed to split them, it was nearly tipping on the edge of like, well, if you know, if, if we fully just go into this, it's sort of like. 15 years of sort of like hours graft to sacrifice all, all, all our chefs do it sort of be like well where's all that skill set gone into and that, that, now you like you know people just see it's making hot dogs even though we don't treat or um, respect them like that but uh, so we, so we wanted to do the other thing as well which is the kitchen table so um, you know so the, I think the, the kitchen the, table at the moment is 17 course tasting menu at the moment is right, those right, 19 right, uh, yeah past week this week is currently 17. Um, it sounds like a lot, but um, we'll show you now how like it starts off some of the courses in the middle and finishes. So it's not like 17 plates of food, you know, some are one bite, some are two bites, some are, some are no cutlery, some are with cutlery. So, yeah, right. uh, the first course, which Mark's already plated, so we, we don't get to talk about it much. <laughs> was, um, so first thing you come in uh, with champagne or whatever you choose to drink at the beginning is, um, is a, a dish of watermelon. So uh, we want it very refreshing, like, like, like summery bites when you come in. So uh, it's, it's hot this week, so it's going to work well. And it's the core of the watermelon, which has been compressed. So that just means we take the air out of it, help concentrate the flavor. And then we dress it in a cordial of last year's elderflower. So uh, all the elderflowers uh, we pick, um, 
make the cordial from it and then we'll make enough to like use throughout the year so you can get those flavours without it like being on the tree. And then uh, with this year's elderflower, it's just a little flower sprinkled on there. There's another herb on there called uh, apple marigold. Uh, this is something that's coming from a walled garden we're using now in Newcastle. And um, like Brett said earlier, it's about um, finding the right people to work with now and um, not necessarily uh, always thinking about what you want to use with them telling you what to use as well. So this guy basically um, sends us uh, two boxes a week just full of herbs and vegetables. We don't really know what's coming. He does try and send me a text, but the text is like <laughs> free things and, you know, boxes of stuff turns up. So that doesn't work. So you don't, you don't want to you don't want to annoy him. So uh, he, he grows all these little herbs and everything in there. And on those days, we'll create the dishes in the morning. So we'll, might have brought the protein for instance but we'll be waiting for the vegetables to come in to pair of it and that's how um, like clean we like to keep the food in the sense of the thinking of the food and then underneath um, that's pure water of tomatoes so we just blitz tomatoes freeze it and then we let it defrost and all the all the pulp of the tomatoes stays below and just the water drips out and then uh, we just lightly jellify it so that's a, a very quick bite when you come into the restaurant amazing and you mentioned the elderflower and i know that mark there with the who, who has got the incredible haircut leaning haircut of marco over there um <laughs> uh, he foraged the elderflower this morning did he yeah. way into work so that, yeah. that is the you are all about the, well, the elderflower has been on the menu in different forms up until now we've done uh, we've done it as desserts and everything and uh, we forage that fresh every day. Um, it, uh, like foraging is a new thing, it's something I learned, uh, knew nothing about before I went to Noma. I knew, I knew zero and then uh, with my time at Noma, the things that uh, we went out and picked ourselves. So it's something I've hung on to for my, for my time there. And anything we use at all on the menu, we, we pick ourselves. And, and sometimes you go after service. Some, Mark was saying that you get on the way home, yeah. he's, he's out there with his torch. Yeah, he nearly got arrested away. once. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> they thought, uh, the honest story was this, they thought he was planting drugs. <laughs> like, because uh, he had his head torch on and everything, and the police came, and because uh, they kept seeing his torch come on and off, so someone phoned the police, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's, that's another he's got like revenue a stream potentially, but I think probably a bit controversial. Bag of rocket flowers. Um, okay, next dish, Mark. So, uh, on, yeah. So that's um, dish one of, oh, we've got 70, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, it's we're good going up. So the next dish is just um, potato. So, um, you know, like a quite a humble ingredient again. I want again. to explain that, because you expl you, each tasting course has just one noun, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So on the menu, when you come in, we don't write a menu, um, and we just put it up on the board in uh, chalk. So uh, one of the concepts of doing or the idea behind that was uh, what I quite like when you eat out as um, sometimes as a chef you're lucky enough that the, the, the chef you're going to eat with or the restaurant you're going to eat with they, they know who you are and they'll just say oh, well, I will cook for you and it's quite an exciting feeling of like you never know what's coming next how long is it going to be you know when's the menu going to stop and uh, you haven't read anything you're going to have so it's like e the whole meal is a surprise element of what, whatever's coming next so the only reason we do that is because I've been told that uh, apparently some people need to know about where they're going to have the wine. Okay. So, uh, yeah. oh, well, it's, it's, so you dictated that, did you, yeah. Sandia? So it's, um, I like to think it's mostly 60% front of the house, 40% kitchen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go, bro. There so, you go. Um, next one's the potato. And this is actually the water of potatoes. So we put potatoes for a fruit juicer. Uh, the water comes out. We start letting it set up in the kitchen with uh, the natural starch in there, and then when it ever so slightly sets, we, uh, we steam it till it's just very lightly cooked. We don't fully cook it through, and then we dehydrate it, and uh, we get this texture. This better puff It's like an inner sole of a shoe. And then uh, we just drop it into the hot oil. And then it, um, when the, is it working, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, blame Mark. Why don't you, James? <laughs> Anyone need a chef? <laughs> yeah. When Mark stops sweating, that eventually puffs up like this. Don't know if you can see that. Where's that? On this one here. Uh, have we got so, th so this will puff up like this. Yeah. And it's uh, basically like a potato cracker then. And then on top we've put um, sour cream, fresh chives, uh, smoked salmon, and then we drizzle it with um, brown sugar. So it's a bit, the idea from this is, comes from like uh, the classic like potato rosti with salmon and uh, creme fraiche. But, uh, and then, uh, you know, in like a, they'll put a maple syrup or something on that. And uh, we just decided to use uh, brown sugar. I, I mean, you've, and, and um, Jay, you've got, you've just been awarded, at, I don't know how long ago, your mission star, haven't you? You've got, you've got one mission star for kitchen table, I'm right yeah. in saying. Um, but, it, you, but throughout this whole procedure, this is kind of reflecting the informal premium dining experience. I know you don't like the term fine dining, but yeah, you know, no, you're, it's, it's, a, it's a conversation you'll have. Your, your kind yeah. of experience is a conversation with your customers. Yeah. Well, uh, we tell the guests that um, 
you know, it's not that we don't like fine dining and we've got nothing against fine dining, but um, I think kitchen table, the concept is uh, very different to fine dining in the sense of like we don't have tables um, where individual people can sit and um, like the service of a, a fine dining restaurant isn't there in a sense because they're sitting around the bar. So we like to call it more, more casual, but we're, we're still thinking of all of our training of uh, fine dining. So the, the way the guests are treated, uh, the, the wine list that we're thinking about, the food that we're doing, the way we cook, the ingredients we buy, is all the same, um, all the same philosophies of behind fine dining. But we just don't want anyone to think that, uh, you know, because e even now some people will like, request a table in the corner on their own. You know, and it's, uh, every, every seat is sitting next to someone or they'll request a table near the window and it's like, there's no windows. And, you know, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's like a casino. Like, uh, we just go in in the morning and, you know, we don't know what time of day it is. But it's, um, yeah. so yeah, we, we are cooking um, in our, we work fine dining, like our fine dining restaurants. But, um, you know, we've, it's, it's, it's more relaxed, you know. You don't have to come to our restaurant in, um, there's no dress code. Um, you know, I mean, we ask that you wear a shirt and, you know, like something on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we did have one guest just once and he, he thought it was a beach party or something. And uh, the lady next to him was a little uncomfortable because... Uh, As he sat there in his mankini. Yeah, it, it was um, close. It was, it, it was really close. So that, that was the um, salmon. So another yeah. snack, very, very quick. And then um, I, it puffed. Well done, Mark. Uh, the next it's snack is uh, chicken. Back. So... Um, as well with us, uh, we work very closely with suppliers. I only work with very few suppliers because uh, buying power for us is tiny. Uh, we find it hard to work with some suppliers. Um, we've had it with fish and vegetable companies now that we don't work with anymore or wasn't able to work with, uh, where we aren't able to give them enough money a month in uh, the buying power. So, you know, from restaurants I've worked in before, you'll buy like two sea bass, a turbot, you know, a number of other fish because you've got your a la carte menu, your tasting menu, and that's a certain amount, 100 pounds. Where now I might spend like, uh, some days like we'll, we'll, we'll spend 30 pound only on fish. And that might last two days. Um, so so um, we have to work closely with these guys that want to work with us now. So we're very lucky to have these. But then in the same sense is they get things as well which uh, they can't shift or use. And they, uh, they ask us to do us favour that. And uh, one of the things way back early was the chicken skins. So the butcher we work with down in Cornwall, he uh, has a hard time shifting chicken skins. And um, so we buy all the chicken skins and we actually do it as a snack. So it's um, baked chicken skin. And then uh, Mark's going to spread that of a rosary mascarpone and uh, bacon jam. And the bacon jam originally came about as um, we kept getting a lot of bacon trim from the hot dogs downstairs. And then the guys just started making bacon jam and having it on toast. And then uh, one day, like, I was just like, yeah, we'll use it upstairs now. So, uh, yeah. but bacon jam's gone and we actually use it on the menu. Um, and that's how that uh, snack came about. So at the start of kitchen table, you'll have uh, four small bites like that. And, um, does, does anybody get? Do any of your customers get confused? Because they kind of there's there's, there's a, you know amazing hot dogs at the front of Italy, but still it's a, it's, a, it's hot dogs and champagne and there's fine dining. Is there any kind of conflict of interest there, or do you think this is actually part of the future where it can be anything your your outlet? Um, no, I, d I don't think we'd ever mix them. Um, is that what you mean? Well, I sort of it's a terrible question. You're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, just filling some time. Um, do you mean like the hot dogs in the away. back? Um, but, uh, no, I, was kind of, I suppose what it is, because you know, the, 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 the theory of the, our, our Congress today is about how things are changing and, and how we're all yeah. going to have to adapt. Uh, in a way, I'm just sort of saying, it's kind of like the world of fine dining or premium dining. Anything goes is really the attitude, I guess. Yeah, well, I think... Um, you yeah, you're right. Um, I think, like, um, you know, you, you cook how you cook, and if, uh, if the guests come to eat that food that you're cooking... Um, you know, that's all you want at the end of the day. It's your restaurant, it's your ideas. Uh, that, you know, that's what you're putting out. If you start looking at what everyone else is doing or what's fashion or what's not, sometimes you may get uh, lost or you may not. So, um, so, so your thing is do what comes from within. Whatever, what's your, yeah, but whatever we, your we, we do keep trying to move forward, but we move forward in the sense of, like, how can we cook things better? How can we find better ingredients? Um, you know, but um, in, in, in my, for my kitchen, we don't use any uh, sort of, um, like, molecular cooking. And just in the sheer fact that I don't know how to do it. So, um, <laughs> and, and that's it. And uh, all the restaurants that I've worked in, apart from small like tapioca maltodextrin uh, things and things like this, I've never been trained in it. And I think, um, you know, you can go to a lot of restaurants now and, uh, you know, young cooks, older cooks, they, they try and do this from eating somewhere else and it's not always so nice. So, uh, you know, we leave it alone because we'd just rather it not be so nice. Mark's still whirring away down there, so I guess we've got a, a couple of seconds. Whilst I'll ask you, try and ask you a good question now, very quickly. Do you think there's ever a situation 
where bubble dogs yeah. could get a Michelin star. Yes. Yes, Sandy, yeah, Sandy. Yeah. All right, <laughs> what, with the right amount of money in the right pockets, uh, maybe it's possible. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll put that, Sandy. What, no, I mean, when we, it would be good for retirement. It would yeah. be. <laughs> when we got the Michelin star for kitchen table, a lot of our guests would come into the door from the front and say, oh, this, is, this must be the uh, Michelin star hot dog place. And, you know, we just played it along because everything, I think because of our training from where we came from, especially with Thomas Keller, we were always installed the idea, no matter if it's a, a six pound hot dog you're putting out or, or a, a dish from an 88 pound menu, everything deserves the same respect for ingredients, for um, the way it's cooked, the, the way things are cleaned down, the way it's presented, everything deserves the same standards and respect. I think, why not? If, if who says hot dogs are so much less than anything else than a, a potato skin that's been dehydrated and fried? You know? <laughs> What's so fancy about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, I think this could get awkward. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> so, yeah. If you two have any issues you want to talk outside, um, yeah. we'll, 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 I mean, it's that coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> And the great thing with that, James and I, is that we work the same, we've been brought up the same way. So even if it's the kitchen that's cooking hot dogs downstairs or the kitchen at kitchen table, we, we think the same, same way. Same standard, same high standard. Absolutely. Well, I agree. Fantastic. Absolutely. You get a mission star for bubble dogs. Can I just do another mission star dish now, Sandeep? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, I really interrupted. Come yeah, on. Yeah, no, real quickly again. Um, so you, using this guy up in, um, up in Newcastle, uh, baby, baby turnips, um, just... Uh, he, you know, he grows, uh, he, he takes the turnips through the whole stage throughout the year. So spring vegetables now, and then he makes them get bigger. So like the, they call the Tokyo turnip, and then the winter turnips. So he sends these down, and uh, they basically don't need any cooking. They're just so soft. So all we do is uh, we just slice them very thin, and then we brush them with uh, this alcoholic vinegar um, just to very quickly marinate them. It breaks them down even more. And we're doing this with sea trout right now. So this sea trout comes from the Shetland Islands. And uh, we're just taking, uh, on the first day we get it, we use it as uh, raw fish. And then the second day, uh, we cook the belly and the, uh, the towel pieces with uh, the blowtorch. But here's just a raw slice of fish, seasoned only with a little bit of um, sea salt. And then uh, right now, the baby veg has all these uh, little leaves. So we use those as well, because they're a little bit peppery. And uh, they just go on the fish as well. So you've, we've used the whole vegetable there. And then uh, on top of that is uh, we just do some comfy skin of lemon. Um, just basically cooked in a little bit of sugar, its own juices, and um, like water, like a stock syrup. And then to go with that, we have a miso. So it's like just fermented soya beans. And then uh, to flavor that, we put all the flesh of those lemons in. So, uh, you know, apart from the white of the pit, uh, we use everything. Can and you, um, uh, James, if your, if your customers come in and say, I, oh, I hate. I hate soya beans. Yeah. Uh, do, do you work with? Do you cook things specifically for it, or do they have? Do they? All uh, we, get... we do it if uh, peop, if people tell us in advance. So when you book a table, you get um, a confirmation email, and uh, we we specifically ask on there if there's anything you can't eat, you have to let us know because we we uh, we seriously just only buy food for the day. Yeah. Uh, kitchen table, the menu changes every single day. We've uh, we've never done the same menu twice since we've been open, and that might be in the sense of uh, uh, just this sea trout tomorrow. It could be with uh, baby beetroots instead of. Um, turnips that could be a change or it could be uh, five new dishes or whatever but we work just so seasonal with the ingredients Brilliant. so uh, as long as they tell us in advance uh, we'll, we'll cater for uh, anyone okay. but if you turn up on the night and you hit me with a vegan bomb there's not a lot we can do <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you know do you eat, do you're you eat still, tots you're in safe ground over here but yeah <laughs> sweet potato fries um, <laughs> So that, 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 that's the dish. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, a small fish course now, and then after that will be a, a cooked fish course. So, uh, you know, we've missed, um, you know, another snack. There's uh, normally like a soup or something summery. Uh, so it'll be like a cold soup now into a fish, then a hot fish. What number are we on now, roughly, of, of the 17, do you reckon? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I say nine-ish. These ready, Mark? Yes, sir. So, um, we're doing this one next. So uh, next up is, um, again, we, uh, we buy, um, we use all the old the whole animals as well as much as we can. We never, um, we, 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 a couple of times we've bought like whole lambs, we use the whole sheep, uh, chickens, anything like this, anything small enough, we buy the whole animal so we can uh, use the uh, thing. The, we've never brought a whole cow, but um, we, we try. So we, every month now we get these ducks from this butcher in Cornwall. And this was a duck that we only ever used to be able to get at Christmas. 
Um, and then the guy's finally uh, two and a half years of me in the butcher and another chef. We've convinced him to kill ducks other than Christmas. So we buy like, um, we're, we're all selected a certain amount of ducks and their age and everything, but because we use the whole duck, so we generate all the hearts. So one night, uh, one night we can do a, di a dish of hearts. So these are uh, duck hearts. We just uh, basically uh, marinate them in brown butter, salt and pepper. They're fried off and we're going to serve them pink with um, yogurt. Sandy, just a quick, quick, quick question while yeah. we're at it. Do, do you, um, do, what do you think people come to Bubble Dogs for? Is it, do you think, because we're talking about the informality of this right. premium product, do you think they just come for the experience? Or do they come to get absolutely banana on your lovely homegrown champagne? Uh, or or, or, or is, it, is it because they just love the food, the hot dog is the greatest on earth? I think, um, well, in terms of sales numbers and figures, we get a 50-50 on food and, and drinks. So that's, that's pretty good for me. Um, I don't know why people, I think most people come nowadays because of the hot dog, because it's so on trend. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot of people who come, because I do think we have one of the greatest uh, grower champagne lists at the moment in, in London. And I, I would hope that people will catch on the fact that it is a champagne bar and come for the champagne. I mean, you're, you're, you're absolutely backing up what Simon was saying earlier, that, that that's a single product can take you a long way, can't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah, well, when we opened uh, Bubble Dogs and Kitchen Table, it was actually harder to open Bubble Dogs than it was Kitchen Table, just because you're selling one ingredient, and when you have one ingredient, you need to make sure that one ingredient is perfect. From the size of the sausages, to the size of the bun, the way it looks, the way it's baked, like everything had to be just right, because that's all you're selling. Yeah. You know, so. And I think we're going to get an idea of how perfect uh, James's hot dog is later. Yeah. Um, uh, but we're, we're, we're so currently on. We're, what number are we on on the your times? I think you're doing very well, actually. Yeah, we'll be fine. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so uh, next, just uh, fresh yogurt. Yeah. And then uh, we have dehydrated blackberries, just seasoned over that. And then uh, so uh, the idea of uh, the stone fruits with um, game always works. So I think the heart is uh, ever so slightly gamey, even though it's, it's, it's not classed as game right now. Uh, so the hearts have just been roasted in brown butter, and then we hit them with uh, peppercorns and um, sea salt. Just place them in the butter. So this is like a, a small meat course. So with, uh, we get about 40 ducks uh, killed for us, and then um, so that'll create 40 hearts, two hearts each. So that's just one night, all the hearts are gone. The next night we might do the neck, the night after that the leg, and then um, after that will be the main meat course. So they get a small meat course, and then the big, so the, the breast is served next. But just with this one, yogurt, blackcurrant powder, the roasted hearts, and then uh, ba baby kale leaves, which we just uh, crisp, crisp in the pan. So it just takes that raw edge off, but they're still, um, you know, they still have a good taste, and uh, it's just another uh, small dish. So, you know, one or two bites, uh, this one's gone. So that's the, uh, the duck hearts. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. And then uh, we're going to do desserts now, or a couple of them. So with, um, with kitchen table as well, we try and use... Um, it's like it's, it's 90 odd percent British ingredients. So the rule is, if it uh, if it lives or grows in the UK, uh, we'll never use foreign. So we'll never use like foreign uh, proteins in the, in the sense of fish, meat, and uh, vegetables. But if we do use citrus fruits like lemons and and limes every now and then. Uh, we use vanilla. Uh, we use chocolate, and um, you know, but not all at the same time. And then the only, the only thing I like to buy, sort of like foreign, is keeping it in Europe, is the cheeses. So every night as well, we do a plated cheese course. So like right now, we're using burrata. Um, okay. And then uh, I like to do that through uh, the, se the cheeses that are in season, which uh, teaches, uh, you know, myself and the chefs. So we like to keep up with that. Cause, but, um, you know, we're heavily on British cheese as well. What's, what do you think is next? Because Simon gave us an idea of the way things are moving in the restaurant world. What do, yeah. what do you think is next? What do you think the next big thing is? Well, I don't know if it's the next big thing. I just think that um, people, like, um, like Brett said, people are eating out more now. And I think it's about having, um, you know, the, in London now especially, um, is you can find most food good, good is in the sense of, like, um, you know, good burger, good hot dog, good Indian food, good um, yeah. Chinese food. And, and before it was just sort of like a certain amount of restaurants um, that everyone went to as a thing. But now there's just so many. Choices. That, 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 yeah. That um, you know, it's, it's, unless people have their like real, you know, we have regulars as well. But like, you, you never really hear of like young chefs eating at the same place twice because they're always eager to try the next chef, the next chef. And I think uh, the chefs are, um, 
you know, we've seen, we've seen it with uh, a lot of restaurants now where they open, uh, they have their main restaurant and they open up a new concept or, or, or what the chef's looking to enjoy because, you know, not too many chefs open up like many fine dining restaurants or, or higher end restaurants and they like to do something that's more casual or enjoying. So I, I just think, um, I, can't, I, I don't know what's going to be next is in do the think sense it's in part of uh, driven the type the, of food. But, do, you think, uh, do you think it's in part driven by the fact that we're all, we're all watching MasterChef, we're all watching those... Never watched it. Well, you, you are, because you're too busy, but some of us, us uh, couch potatoes are. Um, but but do, you not, do you not sense that we, kind of, we want to go on that, that kind of adventure with our food these days, where perhaps 20 years ago it wasn't the everyday yeah. man's... Well, we just, had a, we just had a weekend in um, Paris, is a good example, and it's sort of like um, when, you, when you hear Paris, of course, it's absolutely covered in uh, free mission star, like stardom of like, the greatest chefs that all of the, all, when we were all younger cooking, we've all looked up to these chefs. So when you go, like, oh, you've got to eat in these restaurants, you've got to eat in that. But now also in Paris is um, a lot of more casual dining. And when we went there, we went to, we went to one uh, free star, which, uh, Alperge, which is amazing. But then uh, we went to three other restaurants. One was more like a casual wine bar, which is known known for its wine, but uh, the chefs in there now have uh, up the food and it was these um, three Asian chefs and they were just putting out the best food and the place was packed. And then the others were like sous chefs of these um, three star chefs, but they were just doing their own thing and they wanted to lose um, all of the name stuff over the top. They, they didn't want to talk about three stars or this, yeah. but they were cooking how they've uh, been trained in that and uh, a lot of different choices on the menu, but uh, all the dishes they got were more adventurous and, yeah. and fun and not, I, I think that's the way I uh, think it's, I think it's literally the, the, the food yeah. will go. I think just a bit more... Um, a lot more places like that. Next one is uh, one of our desserts, and this is uh, one we just call balsamic. So uh, balsamic vinegar ice cream. Uh, we flavour a, a neutralised cream base with balsamic, so it has the right uh, creaminess to acid. And then uh, over the top of that is um, another balsamic, which is uh, infused with black truffles. Uh, so it gets um, poured over the top. So balsamic vinegar ice cream, balsamic vinegar infused with black truffles. Then on the top of that, this is the, uh, the crispy skins of artichokes. So we uh, fry off artichokes until they become very crispy. So this adds uh, like a nice earthiness flavour and um, a great texture. And then over the top as well, we grate uh, more, more truffles. And these are uh, truffles from um, Italy, the Tuscany ones. And it, this is actually um, a dish which comes straight after the cheese and before the dessert. And then like, uh, just one to say, like, is it, is it savoury or is it uh, dessert? Like just because there's an ice cream on there, er everything else would be used in savoury food normally. Yep. So that's just one that we put on there. And, you know, it's one of those ones where people have some, some people just like it straight away. Some people have to think about it. But that's uh, one, of the, one of the fun ones we're doing at the moment. Yep. And then um, the next one we did is uh, this was a, a dish um, of peas and strawberries. So uh, super simple. We make um, a pea, uh, pea and mint sorbet. Uh, it's very strong in both pea and mint, so like minted bird's eye peas. So uh, it's a flavour we've gone for. So they're just like ledge. <laughs> <laughs> I just love them. <laughs> they're, they're British pea as well, aren't they? That's yeah. Cool. Best do we in not, the world. Do, is there not a single truffle in, in the UK? There is, yeah. Uh, I believe they, uh, most of them come from uh, Wiltshire. We did, we did used to use those, um, but they were quite rare. And, um, you know, not, not every restaurant had them, uh, British truffles. And then uh, the price was very reasonable with uh, sort of like the summer truffle of Tuscany, they're very much. And now, for some reason, they're, uh, they're about £300 more, and there's, there's just like loads of them. So yeah. I'm just wondering where they all, all of a sudden will come from. So we, I don't choose to use those at the moment because uh, I, I find the summer truffle from Tuscany in, in the same sort of yeah. thing. And, um, you know, when we're doing 17 courses, of course, you're running a business as well, so you need to make it, uh, you know, if we brought all of the things at that high price, we'd have about five courses. So yeah, it's uh, pea, nice. pea and mint ice cream, and I don't know how to do a quenelle, so I don't do them. <laughs> and then uh, in the middle of that is uh, English strawberries. Uh, <laughs> and these come from the walled garden as well. So um, not all of them turn, like, uh, you can just see there, there's, well, there's not even two the same size there. So we're... Uh, Size for us uh, as well is not, is not something we look for. Just dressing a bit of their own juices. So if, uh, because he keeps sending in so many, if we can't use them all, uh, if, if, if they go too soft, we just create a juice from them. And then uh, over the top of that is um, a pea and mint meringue. Oh. So this is made of uh, dry peas. So we make dry peas, which is the body of the meringue. And then uh, we make uh, with uh, fresh mint. Sorry, Mark. 
and then with the uh, fresh mint, we, uh, we put that into the syrup, which makes the, uh, the meringue. So that's uh, just a, a very quick like pre-dessert as well, strawberries and peas. And then uh, last dish, and then we'll do the hot dogs and beer. So you. this is a, a gooseberry dish. So it's a parfait made of yogurt. On the top of that, we have the green almonds. So uh, before the almond becomes hard and unripe almond, just laid over the top. And then we've hit that with uh, the fresh pine. So uh, another thing um, I learned to use in Nome, these are like the tips of the Christmas trees. So right now they're all starting to grow and they're very uh, soft and uh, thing, but the flavor in them is uh, amazing, like really piney. Uh, we just put that over the top. And then uh, table side is uh, just juice gooseberries. So we put uh, gooseberries through the thing. It's, this one's uh, always served ice cold. And then uh, that, that literally finishes it like that. So in terms of like a uh, presentation, that it's all mixed up all over the show. So there we are, uh, you know, I like all the almonds to be perfect, right? And then that one there is just like you'd eat ice cream at home. So yeah. that's, a, that's a quick menu at a uh, kitchen table. Wow, that's the, that's the kitchen table. Right. Uh, yeah. And now, and now, for the now big, the reason, the everyone, finish, the now the reason everyone comes. <laughs> So uh, bubble dogs, um, you know, Cindy has explained the concept. Again with that, so, um, you know, we, we really don't like to think of anyone thinking it's just a, just a hot dog. So uh, we put the same um, thought process. It's, it's all the same supplies we use, not really from the walled garden, but our other veg supplies and things. So uh, the, bre the bread, every, every bread roll comes in uh, fresh every day. It's a recipe that we work with very closely with the baker. It's not something we can bake in the premises because, uh, you know, bakeries are, are big. And uh, these are made um, fresh every day, every single one hand rolled. And then uh, the same with the sausages. It's, um, let's pretend they're hot. Um, same with the sausages. Um, <laughs> No, no one's to blame there. No yeah, yeah. You just everyone's had a cold sausage, right? Okay. <laughs> so um, the sausages as well, it's a small maker that we use. And around him, he supports eight farms. Oh, wow. So he buys meat from eight farms, pork and beef. So we have 100% pork and 100% beef and a vegetarian one. Uh, the classic hot dog is normally a mix of both. But uh, so many people now with no pork, no beef, we, we split it all up. Yeah. So uh, there's something for everyone. Uh, and they're, they're, all, um, they're all made to a spec as well. Uh, so, and then uh, the first one we're going to do is called um, the Jose. So we just have um, we have fun with the hot dogs, and we do a hot dog for all the different themes. So there's a different one at Christmas. We've got like the um, full English dog, with basically a whole full English breakfast on top of a hot dog. And basically, if you can think of an idea, we'll just put it on a hot dog. So uh, <laughs> our, our, rest, our restaurant manager's just done the uh, the chippy recently. So he, uh, you know, like cod batter. He just dipped the whole hot dog in cod batter deep fried it over the top of that we've got um, Edinburgh brown sauce and uh, it's oh. just like uh, chi crispy chips on t uh, potatoes on top it's just like uh, fish and chips but big hot dog in the middle and nice. this one's called the Jose the inspired by Cindia uh, what? You, you, so the Jose, yeah. was it not, not yeah. a former it's boyfriend? A... I hope this could get awkward. Um, <laughs> no, no <laughs> he got deported a... <laughs> we wanted something fresh on the, on the hot dog so we thought uh, Mexican salsa. So we make a fresh uh, salsa every day, just tomatoes, fresh chilies, coriander, um, red onions. And then on top we do uh, guacamole as well, and then sour cream and top with uh, pickled jalapenos. So how, how does it work out? Do you just kind of collaborate together when you think of a new sort of version of the hot dog? Yeah, we do. Well, mostly I come up with the ideas and then I run to James and go, can you make this for me? Really yeah. So, I mean, he has the cooking skills, unfortunately, I don't have, so I just come up with the crazy ideas. Um, I guess the key question we're all wanting to know the answer to is, is, is if there's a, cr a crucial decision, who wears the trousers in this relationship? <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> This, yeah. You mean that in a good way, obviously. Yeah. You made the right decision, Sandy. That's the thing. I mean, that, that, so you literally can come up with anything. You can just... You just can. I mean, last year during the World Cup, we did a, a series of uh, World Cup hot dogs, so one representing, 50, uh, one representing each country, and we picked 15 countries to do so. So, yeah, it's, it's good fun. It's fun for us. It's fun for the, for the chefs, fun for the guests to come back as well, uh, so they can come back and try different ones. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, I guess that's a get, and in keeping with what we're all talking about today, the changing face of modern gastronomy. I mean, you really, you, you, have to, you have to offer something different constantly almost, don't you? Yeah. I mean, Byron Burgers does a great job with it. Every, every month I see a new, new burger out. 
then I get jealous and yeah. I go back and brainstorm. As, as do uh, uh, Gourmet Burger Kitchen as well, because I know we've got someone here from GBK. Um, so they do a great job too. Um, <laughs> there are other burgers available, um, just to make sure we're all PC on that one. But um, yeah, no, that, I mean, that, that is, I guess, that's what keeps people coming back because they don't know yeah. what's going to be on the menu. Well, and to keep it interesting and fresh as well, we also do um, a guest chef dog. So we always have a, sort of like a, fr a friend chef or, you know, a well-known chef and they decide on a hot dog. They send us the recipe and, uh, or they come and make it. So uh, right now we have uh, another Michelin star chef from Brooklyn called Daniel Burns, who I worked with at Noma for a long while. He did a guest chef recently with us. And while he was there, he came up with his hot dog. So that's called like the Burns. And then we had the Matt Orlando and we've had various other hot Brilliant. dogs. Brilliant. But this one here, uh, the bun, it's been shred, uh, spread with a puree of uh, avocado. Then you've got the sausage on top, that uh, salsa, which uh, Sandir uh, talked about. And then we just put sour cream over the top and then finish it with um, spicy jalapenos. So that, that's the Jose. This this is one of the uh, the, the bigger sellers. So it literally, phenomenal. yeah, and that goes like that. And that's a hot dog. Yeah. And who are your who are your regulars? Are they are they the, the city boys or are they the media no, types? No, actually, are they? Um, our 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 guest base is about eighty percent women. Is it? Yeah. Surprisingly, in the hot it's, dog um, guys what? hate it. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. What, what hate the hot dog or hate the fact that the <laughs> no the waiters? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's well, why do you think that is? It's a matter of interest. I'm not sure. I think because of the champagne element. I think. Yeah. I yeah. think women find it uh, uh, champagne's easier for them to drink. And once in a while, you look out in the dining room and it's all up. women and a couple of unlucky boyfriends that up. get dragged along. <laughs> did, did, can the can the boyfriends you know? Can I get a beer? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we stock a few uh, artisanal beers yeah. in, on Excellent. our list as well. We have a small back bar as well, which, uh, which we use the same philosophy with the champagnes. They're all from small producers and you know, rare, yeah. rare bottles. Excellent. And then we've got the, uh, the Mac Daddy. So this is the one that will, will destroy you if you, you never leave hungry if, if you have beer. So uh, the bun, the dog, over the top of, top of it, macaroni and cheese. And then uh, crispy bacon bits and uh, crispy crispy fried onions. Oh, so uh, yeah. God, that's, I, I'm doing my very best not to attack that yeah. right now. So we'll cut it up and pass it around. Yeah. But then uh, that one there's the. We're, uh, we're going to cut Daddy. them up. We're going to get we're going to get some of the back rows as well. We're going to yeah. cut up uh, these. I think Mark very kind. And, and, and the last fast. the last thing is um, Cindy. If you want to talk about these, these are called um, horny devils. Okay. <laughs> so one of so my wacky your... ideas was to do a corn dog, and it's very hard to explain to the English chefs what a corn dog is, because they would just come back to me and say, are you kidding? You're going to batter a hot dog in cornmeal and deep fry it. Why would you do that? It's classic in America at, when we go to fairs and you, you have a corn dog, it's on a stick. Yeah. It's just battered and, and fried. Um, but they never really had corn in it, which I love. So I decided to fold in uh, sweet corn kernels in it, so it became all knobbly and corny. And, and then I named it the horny dog instead of the corn dog, because uh, <laughs> everybody always says sex sells. <laughs> that worked. Um, and then we decided to come up with a, with a side dish that was a little bit different than your regular jalapeno poppers. So we did um, the corn batter with all the sweet corn kernels in it. We threw some uh, cheddar cheese in it and we threw some jalapenos in it. And then made them into a batter, into fritters and Tasteful. deep fried them. Oh, I'd love to. They're hot. They're, 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 and that you are, with these so guys, they're, they're coming around. Out, they're called horny devils because mm. the corn dog had sex with the jalapenos and had little horny devils. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's what comes down to the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> this is how we come up with this dish. <laughs> I, 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 I'm loving the horny. Yeah. yeah I love that. It's delicious. And, and they're, yeah. they're great with champagne. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So that's how the, uh, the mines and kitchen table and uh, bubble dogs are... Uh, Amazing. Have you got yeah. one more hot dog? Are you done? No. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you're done. Is that enough? No, I think you've done okay. enough. That's incredible. <laughs> Here are for Jane, Nabin, and the end. And Mark, guys, incredible. Yeah. yeah.